Hello everyone, my name is Kyla. Welcome to my channel where I talk about the stock market and the economy amongst other things. Welcome back to the Everything That You Need to Know series, a series of different primaries where I break down everything that you need to know about the stock market, the economy, and the crypto market. So today, we're going to be talking about DAOs. Everything that I talk about today will be linked in the description box below. Go ahead and check that out. Also, if you want to go ahead and hit subscribe, get a thumbs up, that's super helpful and I do appreciate it. What is a DAO? A DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. It's a group organized around a mission that coordinates through a shared set of rules enforced on a blockchain as Linda writes in her very, very good piece about DAOs. At the most basic level, they use collective participation to fund things and to get things done. Breaking down every aspect of that word, decentralized so they exist within the internet. They're executed through a blockchain. Autonomous meaning collective participation, collective ownership. It's executed through smart contracts, so they're isn't always sort of like a leader figurehead role, but we'll kind of talk about the nuances of all that moving forward. Then it's an organization, so you can kind of think of it like an LLC or a C-Corp. LLC meaning a limited liability corporation, so you're a traditional corporation, but on the blockchain and executed through smart contracts. And we'll talk about what all that means. Smart contracts, they automate some of their activities through smart contracts, which are contracts that execute when certain conditions are met. So I always use this example, but if I wanted to press a button at 11.30 a.m. Pacific, I could execute a smart contract saying, oh, go and press that button for me. It'll execute right at 11.30 a.m. Pacific because the conditions were met in order for it to, to execute that contract. And that reduces the need for a lot of human decision makers. So if you have smart contracts that are executing on certain conditions where it's like maybe payroll or different things that are a little bit more automated, a little bit more operational, that's going to reduce inefficiencies and reduce a lot of over overhead cost. There's also the decentralized decision making aspect of it. Suits don't have all the power people do. People vote and the power is distributed through something called tokens. You can kind of think of tokens as like shares of stock in a company, but those shares of stock, these tokens also represent the ability for you to vote on different proposals that pass through the DAO. A very, very basic example of smart contracts and sort of this decentralized decision making process. Let's say that I was part of a, the Kyla DAO and I wanted to to tell Kyla Dow that we were going to film a video on the Frankfurt School of Philosophy. I would submit a proposal to the Kyla Dow and the rest of the Kylas in the Dow would vote. If two thirds of the Kylas vote yes, we do want to film, then that smart contract would be executed and we would get on our way to filming. You start by sending in a proposal, other people vote, and then it's executed upon when everybody else agrees. For another example on how a DAO could work, I use this example on the Realignment podcast and a lot of people got mad at me in, in the comment section because I use Starbucks as the example. You'll understand why they got mad. Let's say Starbucks had a DAO instead of having a company, so Starbucks DAO. If you were a barista at Starbucks, you could get ownership in the Starbucks DAO. You would get a token. And I know that Starbucks employees can get bean stock, but this would be a little bit different. So rather than just having bean stock, you would have actually token ownership in the Starbucks DAO. Let's say every year you all get together and you're like, okay, pumpkin spice latte this year and people can vote on whether or not they want to have the pumpkin spice latte. A lot of that stuff does get organized away within DAOs as they grow because you can't have everybody voting on everything. You can kind of think of it like that, like the scaled out ownership in organization, but with some of the parts removed, instead of five guys in a boardroom somewhere making all the decisions, it would be people making those decisions with their token ownership of the DAO. A good quote here, companies are a collection of legal contracts and DAOs are a collection of smart contracts. DAOs are meant to be transparent, accessible, global, have a flat hierarchy, and pretty much the opposite of a traditional corporation. But with all that being said, there is a little bit of hierarchy in most DAOs. Also, there's scaling issues. If you were having a DAO of 300 people and you had 300 people in your Discord, that's going to get a little bit chaotic usually. So they do run into the root organizational issues where it's a little bit better to organize a little bit smaller. DAOs can do a lot of different things in this piece, not even scratch the surface on all the different DAOs that are out there, but they can manage projects they can act as funds for investment, they can act as an exchange, collective buying, etc. They usually start off with a core team and then evolve to a broader community and then eventually open up to the rest of the world. But there's a lot of different types of DAOs. So you have the DAO operating systems, the lifeblood of DAOs, what gives it the heartbeat. Then you have investment DAOs, so DAOs that get together, they pull together funds and they go invest in different things. Then you have grants DAOs, so DAOs that issue grants to different projects. Then you have collector DAOs, so they'll usually collect NFTs or different art pieces. So 
most notably Pleaser Dao collected the Wu Tang album, which is really, really cool. I'll talk about the Constitution Dao a little bit later in this. There's also Protocol Dao's. Those would be where you can actually go invest. Index is a really great example here. Just a t- all of them. Olympus, on the note of Olympus, what they've been doing is really interesting. Bankless did, of course, an excellent podcast with the founder of Olympus, Zeus. So if you want to get really into the roots of like DeFi, Dao's, like how all of that ties together at, at a very in-depth level, I'll link that podcast below and it's a really good overview of DeFi 2.0 and, and where this space could be going. A lot of different types of DAOs. And all of the above DAOs are supported by different tools, which are super important, obviously, because they're an organization, so they have to manage the treasury, they have to, to have voting platforms, etc. There's a really good uh, spiderweb graph that talks about this, so token services, governance, treasury management, risk management, growth, community, operations, development. There's a lot that goes into the, into the DAO space. Operations are incredibly important. If you have ever worked at a startup, you usually end up doing operations, even if it's not in your job title, just because operations are so important to startups and with DAOs obviously operations are going to be a key component because most of them are startups so these DAO ops are super important to the functionality and the livelihood of the DAO. So how do DAOs operate? They use three main points of leverage to operate and there's four different types of ways that you can incentivize humans. This is from a research paper called Online Motivational Factors Incentives for Participation and Contribution in Wikipedia. So why do people do what they do? Let's get right into that this this Monday morning. Um, According to a functionalist perspective in psychology, individuals perform certain activities because they serve one or more functions. There's essentially four clusters of functions. So there's value expressive, there's utilitarian, there's social adjustive, and then there's knowledge. So value expressive, you're going to do something because that's your way of saying, I care about this. You should know that I care about this. Utilitarian, you might want a monetary reward. So that's kind of where DAOs sit. Social adjustive, you're doing something because you want to fit in with your peer group. Maybe you participated in the Healy's trend in elementary school or whenever Healy's were popular for you and you just wanted to fit in. That was you being social adjustive. Knowledge by engaging in a particular task, you're learning. So that's what DAOs are for me personally, like just learning, but most people want a little bit more incentive beyond that. So you can kind of put together all those different functions and that's kind of where DAOs sit. So you're expressing your values by joining a DAO, you're getting a monetary compensation by joining a DAO, you're usually expressing something socially by joining a DAO, and then you are learning by joining a DAO as well. And so DAOs use the money and incentives. So, hey, we're going to give you this token. It's probably going to appreciate in value over time. You can also use it to vote. So that's pretty cool. Then commitment. So you have to buy a minimum amount of tokens in order to be a part of the DAO. So the more active that you are in the project, the more involved that you can be. And it just kind of that DAO flywheel starts spinning. There's also decentralized power. So most of the contracts execute on that majority rule vote. So if the proposal passes with two thirds vote, it doesn't matter what the leaders want. It's gonna go through anyway, usually. Usually, um, so for example, with Kyla DAO, if two thirds of the Kylas were like, yes, we have to do a video on the Frankfurt School, or if we were in the Starbucks DAO, two thirds had to vote on the pumpkin spice latte. An example of this decentralized power falling apart is what happened with Curve and Moki. So Curve Finance, uh, essentially what happened there is the main team over there saw that Moki was getting moochy. So this is a super high level overview. Curve had to step in because there was a group called Moki that was, they were trying to steal money and just rug. And Curve was like, "Uh uh-uh, no. And so they established an emergency DAO and they pulled the plug. And the community got really mad because they were like, hey, that's pretty rude. We're supposed to be decentralized. We should have voted on them whether or not you're gonna pull the plug. The team was like, we had to, this was an emergency. And they were like, nope, it's decentralized power. This difference between governance and government and what happens in times of war. Can you have decentralized power in times of war? Can it be an emergency DAO? Is that okay? There are these examples of DAOs having learning curves. Mm -hmm. This meets a lot of our needs as humans. We want to be a part of something. We want to be incentivized to be a part of something. And DAOs allow for this collective belief in the value of an asset. So everybody's like vibing, everybody's going around. And another point to note is organizations move at the speed of trust. So if everybody's equally invested in the DAO and its path forward, that can imply that that DAOs move pretty quickly. Some examples. Uh, So Friends with Benefits is a really good example. They do a lot of different interesting things. They're uh, at the forefront of a lot of different stuff. The forefront (laughs) is another one. I I spoke about them a little bit earlier. They organize different DAO pieces. They put together really awesome primers pleaser dao so they buy nft art but it's more than that so they they bought the wu-tang album so it's community freedom decentralization community ownership of all these different assets then there's seed club so seed club is an incubator for DAOs, so kind of sort of like a yc but for dao companies so they had their demo day 
on Friday, baby DAOs are getting funding, which is cool. There's Bankless DAO, so Bankless is an awesome. Bankless is great. The crypto media company, highly recommend that you go check out their stuff as well. Um, then their own personal favorite of mine is <laughs> Dave DAO. So it's all these Daves, kind of like Kyla DAO, I guess, the, the non-existent Kyla DAO. But all these Daves get together in this DAO and they just kind of like hang out and talk to each other. <laughs> DAOs can be really anything that you want it to be. It's a subreddit with a token attached to it. So you can kind of think of it like that. But there's also so much more that they can do. Quick aside, there's the Constitution DAO. This is a group that is trying to buy up the U.S. Constitution. But for the first time in 33 years, one of 11 surviving copies of the official edition from the Constitutional Convention will be publicly auctioned by Sotheby's. Constitution DAO is a DAO that is pulling together money to win this auction, and they want to put the Constitution in the hands of the people, distribute the responsibility among many, and provide the infrastructure to keep the Constitution preserved and i'll link below to what's going on with them if you want to learn a little bit more about them so just using them as an example just an interesting thing that people can do collectively by the US, u.s constitution and i think it's a really interesting proposition a huge fan of, of what they're doing i did donate 0.0178 eth to the project so i am invested uh, I think it's something that's really interesting and if you want to learn more, it's a really cool way to get exposure to DAOs. It's a really interesting way to just learn a little bit more about this space if you're interested. I highly recommend that you go check it in. If you have any questions, please let me know. I am about to talk about an idea that I have. Buying the constitution is hard enough, but I just wanted to talk about this idea of like how do we get more people onboarded into crypto, which they're doing by having the constitution DAO, but I also wanted to talk about a different idea of like what would it look like if we actually implemented a way for different people to get access to the constitution. It's just something I wanted to discuss. Personally, I think it'd be really cool to airdrop a token of the constitution to everybody in the United States. I, I section off my, my videos, so please skip ahead if you don't want to hear me talk about this because it's just me rambling. But one thing that I was thinking about when I was talking to the team members, I think that we should airdrop a token to everybody in the United States. And I know that you're like, whoa, that's like, that's super wild. It would obviously not be a ton of money, but I think it would just be a really interesting way to onboard people into crypto. Obviously, there'd be huge regulatory issues with that. There'd be a bunch of headwinds with that. But I think like even just proposing that idea of how do we get more people onboarded into crypto would be really neat. And obviously, they can't really do that. They're trying their best with just buying the Constitution, which, you know, is an endeavor within itself. But that's just something I've been thinking about is like, how do we get more people into this space in an accessible way? Obviously, there's a, still a ton of things that have to be worked out within the crypto ecosystem to make that stuff not, oh, we got rug pulled. And they're obviously working on that. But this is just kind of how I'm thinking about it. So airdropping a token to everybody in the United States, I think would be really cool. Well, that's a pie in the sky idea. All right, back to what DAOs are. Sorry. You know me, just always talking. Back to DAOs. So what's the difference between a traditional company and a DAO? So a traditional company would be a Delaware C Corp, LLC. Incorporation on a DAO would be smart contracts. As an aside here, DAOs still have to incorporate through a C Corp or an LLC just because US regulatory situation is, is terrible. So they still have to go through that traditional process, but everything else is on-chain. Payment processing, traditional company is going to use Stripe, going to use Gusto. DAOs are going to use smart contracts, funding, savings, loans, investors, crowdfund. DAOs would use a permissionless crowdfund that issues tokens. Liquidity, go public. That's how you make your money if you're a traditional company. DAOs is a token. You kind of have that day one liquidity, which is really cool. Because if you work at a startup, you don't have to wait for your equity to invest. You get day one liquidity, which is uh, neat. <laughs> And then a traditional company, mostly executives, board of directors, a governance on a DAO would be token holders in the community. With that being said, there is that core contributor of DAOs at the top usually. Every, like, everything has to end up hierarchical in the end. That's just kind of how it works. But this is a really great table made by Patrick over at Mirror. It just breaks down the difference between a traditional company and a DAO. So it's just to like kind of summarize here, what are DAOs? It's ownership, it's collective participation, it's involvement. So you own equity, you own a token, you're incentivized to be involved because you have this token. It's collective participation to fund and get things done. So kind of the bull case here, DAOs are really tangible and they fit into how we think about the world. So like NFTs are like, what are those, right? Click save. But DAOs is like, okay, like everybody's been exposed to a corporation or organization at this point. So they can figure out like what a DAO means to them. And then there's also power to the people. A decentralized coordination seems really hard, but you know we saw what happened with Reddit and GME earlier this year. And also I think that you know with remote work on the rise, we all have figured out that we can work far away and still get things done. Flattened hierarchy. This allows everybody to do their do work. 
which I think is neat. You don't have to know people. You don't have to have that Silicon Valley network, which <laughs> it's very hard to to crack into, man. It's super freaking hard. With the creator economy, ownership of product is really important. So if you're an artist, owning your work, monetizing your work, then time premium. Liquidity is also really important. You know, when you start, join a startup, you can't vest for a year, but here you would have liquidity day one. Changing demographics. So I am a Gen Zer. <laughs> There's zero desire for most Gen Zers to work for a traditional corporation. And I think DAOs could be a really great solution to those changing demographics. So in the bear case situation, it's also important to address the DAO. So the DAO was one of the first DAOs. It was meant to be this next iteration of an economic organization, but it wasn't. Hackers hit it. Then the Ethereum core team had to do a hard fork on Ethereum in order to save it. That could have been awful if they didn't do that. But a lot of people are only interested in elevating themselves. There are bad people out there. We see it all the time in crypto with rug pulls. But of course, you see this all the time in traditional organizations. For example, whatever is going on with Johnson & Johnson, it seems a little bit fishy to me. Legality, a lot of them are not legally recognized unless you're in Wyoming or a couple other places, for example. But that's going to change. Like the New York City mayor elect is very into crypto. Miami mayor is very into crypto. So that could change. So final thoughts. Community ownership. Yay. <laughs> it's not a bunch of suits, which is kind of nice. It's, it's stakeholders determining the path forward. You're incentivized through monetary compensation. There's also that element of decision making. There's still human nature that you always have to hedge against. And this is really just the beginning of DAOs. So people are working on building the accounting standards for DAOs that could credential the system. Once we get the regulatory aspect of it fixed, I'm sure that'll be really good. But DAOs also require clarity of vision, collective coordination, and clear process. Like they're an organization at the end of the day. They're a of. So you have to have that stuff in place. And I think another important point is Honam, who's like one of my favorite VCs. Crypto is ever changing. And I think the way that we think about businesses could be changing too. In five years, it might not be DAOs. It might be an entirely different economic entity that we treat as a business model. It might not be LLC. Maybe this entire like organizational model would be disrupted away and something entirely different. So that's something too. It's like the world is rapidly changing. Like, whew, that's our curve right now is we're just human. We're just shooting up the curve. That's how it is. So if you want to buy the constitution i'll link that below in the description box if you want to read the notes all all of them are going to be in the description box if you have any questions comments concerns as always leave a comment and yeah i'll be back tomorrow with the energy crisis and thanks so much for hanging out